Nick, I want you to stand by. I also want to bring into this conversation special guest uh, we now have. Uh, Evo Dalder is joining us, the former U.S. ambassador to NATO. He spent more than four years as the U.S. ambassador to NATO. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Ambassador, the, the NATO Secretary General says Putin made a big mistake launching this war. How do you think Putin views the Western response and, and these summits, three summits here in Brussels today? You know, I think uh, he did make a big mistake because he thought that the Ukrainians would greet uh, Russian soldiers as liberators, and instead they uh, took up arms from from your uh, barber to uh, to the CEO, and the entire country is mobilized. And he thought that the West, uh, uh, which he he sees as a decadent, declining uh, power, was going to fold and be divided. And instead, uh, as we see uh, today, three summits uh, of the three major Western organizations coming together, standing together with the people of Ukraine, saying they're going to provide whatever they need in order to, to defend themselves, uh, to bolster NATO, to uh, strengthen sanctions, and to uh, increase the political isolation uh, from Russia. He must uh, be sitting there uh, in, uh, in the Kremlin and really wonder, how is this going to end, and, uh, and what is he going to do next? And I think one of the issues that they discussed at NATO is the one that Nick raised. It's the possibility of of escalating with chemical or, or even nuclear weapons. That's uh, how bad the situation is for him and frankly, how dangerous the situation is for all of us. And we also saw, Ambassador, uh, the momentum growing today uh, to force Russia out of the G20. Uh, the G20, uh, is this a fundamental shift? Is Putin uh, sliding from uh, adversary to in international pariah? You heard President Biden say he doesn't want Putin uh, in the G20 anymore. Yeah, no, I think that is the attempt, clearly, uh, and, and, and making Putin a true pariah internationally is something that we spend a lot of time on. And I note that in the, in the NATO summit, for example, it, uh, statement, it, it uh, pointed out that countries need, really can't sit on the sidelines, and it specifically called on, the China, uh, on China and Xi Jinping uh, to uh, condemn uh, what has happened uh, with regard to the Russian invasion of Ukraine and to make sure that they didn't support Russia materially, because if they did, there will be real consequences. So there is this attempt really to to try to isolate uh, uh, Russia politically. I think trying to get them out of the G20 is exactly the right thing to do. Uh, and we'll see uh, how far we have. But we're going to get at least the West is united. Now we need to get the rest on board. We'll see if that happens. You know, Nick, uh, there's also a lot of growing speculation out there right now about the Russian defense minister who hasn't been seen or heard from much lately, despite his key role in Russia's military invasion. Uh, what can you tell us? Yeah, and I think it's important when we look at what's happening with Sergei Shoigu, the defense minister, to understand that he is an old crony, if you will, a, a friend of President Putin's for more than 20 years now, uh, one of his uh, contemporaries that he grew up with in St. Petersburg. He is a very close and trusted person, or has been, to President Putin. The Russian media has been speculating that they haven't seen Sergei Shoigu on television since the 18th of March, and they're speculating that perhaps uh, that was actually recorded on the 11th of March, so two weeks of not being seen. The uh, spokesman for President Putin today said that, uh, that said that Shoigu was busy. The defense ministry today said that Shoigu had been on the phone today with the Armenian defense minister. So uh, the, uh, the Kremlin, they're essentially trying to say he's still in play. He was on TV again today, but it's hard to know when that was actually recorded. It would be huge if Putin had sidelined him, Wolf. Yeah, that, that would be significant indeed. Uh, Nick Robertson, thanks very much. Uh, Evo Dalder, the former U.S. ambassador to NATO, thanks for, for joining us as well.